Hello, it's Christmas Day, um, coming up to midnight here in Tokyo, Christmas Day 2021. So I thought I'd uh, record you just a quick message, quick update. I know I always say the videos are going to be quick and then they're very long, but this one genuinely will be quick because I have to do my physiotherapy exercises and get to bed. Um, yeah, it's been a good Christmas. Um, Christmas doesn't have any particular meaning to me, except, of course, now it's kind of a big marker for being alive. Since I was diagnosed with terminal cancer um, five years ago, just over five years ago. So, in a way, like every Christmas feels like it's going to be my last um, and that feeling is kind of getting quite a bit weaker now, fortunately, because, um, thanks to your donations, I've been having, um, fantastic treatment and getting really impressive results. So yesterday I got the result of a CT scan, which i had had, um, the previous Monday and the scan showed no visible tumours, nothing that kind of looked like a tumour. There's some uh, scarring in my right lung, which um, is should be from the um, radiotherapy I had to deal with the lung tumour. It's now um, kind of a year and a half ago, or maybe two years ago. Wow. So... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the best news that I could get. <laughs> really, no visible tumours. Um, it's been like that now for, I think, over, over a year and a half. And it's been over a year since I last had chemotherapy. When I had my uh, abdominal surgery, now um, five months ago, in July of this year, during the Tokyo Olympic Games, uh, the surgeon didn't see any tumours in the abdominal cavity, um, nothing on the like abdominal membrane, the peritoneum, which was one of the places the cancer had spread to uh, when it was first found five years ago. So it's extremely good news. Um, and what it means is, well, it means some small things like um, I won't have another CT scan for four or five months um, unless I get a bad blood test result so I'll keep having the monthly blood tests and if the um, results from the blood tests are okay then I won't have a scan for another four or even five months and if that one is okay then yep yeah, I'll be moving to scans every six months, um, which would be, yeah, very nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, the whole thing is just unbelievable, really. Uh, five years ago, realistically, seven to nine months to live. That's with a good result from treatment. Um, a fraction of 1% of people get to um, live this long once the cancer has got into the abdominal membrane like it has for me um, yeah I mean we're very much looking now at the possibility that the cancer is cured or that I, um, I'll live to a point where a really reliable cure becomes available um, and uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm going to try incredibly hard to make a really reliable cure for cancer using existing treatments, uh, cutting edge treatments, combining cutting edge treatments. Um, you know, I asked my oncologist yesterday, just out of habit, you know, what did he think of my cancer? Why does he think I've got such a good result what's the key factor he 
instantly he just said no key factor it's the combination of everything so i've had seven different kinds of cancer treatment surgery chemotherapy radiotherapy molecular targeted therapy uh, hypothermia therapy um, metabolic therapy and um, what else something else so seven of the kind of eight cancer treatments i've had um yeah so i've had a lot of treatments a lot of different treatments and in combination um they have got me to a point where you know i don't want to say i'm cured but um if if there's cancer in my body it's not forming um kind of largest tumors yet um obviously yeah there could still be cancer cells in my abdomen cancer cancer cells in all the places where there's been the cancer so that's um abdominal membrane in te uh, large intestine liver lymph nodes and uh, right lung um it could be cancer in all those places but um small and being controlled or suppressed by my immune system or there may not be any cancer there um and in any case you know i can i can say there's a chance that i will live long enough for there to be a reliable cancer cure um so at the moment i'm not having any treatment and um yeah i'm not gonna have i mean i've got no planned treatment from now on it's just testing and if if i get a bad bad blood test which means um high levels of these uh, tumor markers so i'm measuring ca99 and um cea if i get bad blood test then i have a ct scan if the ct scan shows um new tumors then i will deal with those tumors and do some chemo afterwards and um, you know whether that's uh, surgery or radiotherapy followed by chemo um, obviously that would be not great but um, it's um, it wouldn't be the end of the world really um, I've got a bunch of treatment options left which is um, an incredible position to be in <laughs> after five years of terminal cancer i mean fraction of one percent of people get into into um situation that uh i'm in thanks to the treatment which um is, is thanks to you and your donations um so if you if you're in a position to donate then um the donation's not going to be used for treatment at the moment um they'll be used to get my cancer organization um off the ground get accelerating a bit and um so this cancer charity which is called make cancer history at the moment there's sort of um a very sparse website that i've put up but you can go to makecancerhistory.jp but if you can donate to my cancer fund um yeah the the funds are used to from or or will be f used from this point on um to yeah get that organization really going get the team together and the point of the organization is really to eliminate cancer um that means or the the mechanism to do that is to get the best treatments from around the world combine them into something reliable with the newest generation of testing so these um, things like the micro rna testing that's now available where with a drop of blood you can very very accurately test for hundreds of cancer types um, liquid biopsy testing where again um, take a blood sample and you can sequence the dna sequence of the gene genome um of cancer you can look for 
um, what's it called, free DNA, maybe. Um, you can look for circulating tumor cells, CTCs. Um, really accurate testing coming out, but we need to combine that with the best treatments. Um, but the thing that um, has been missing in cancer treatment up till now, the thing that I think I can um, really uh, make a big impact with is, is um, refactoring the treatments. So getting um, the treatments as low um, cost as possible so that um, these treatments are going to be available for everyone and making them routine and really focusing on cancer agnostic treatments so treatments that work for all cancers because they're not specific to um, like a target molecule on the cancer cells um, so instead they are for example um, targeting the lactic acid that forms around the cancer cells that forms around the tumors and um, that lactic acid protects the tumors from your immune system as the white blood cells um, struggle to get through it and die um, so getting rid of that lactic acid suppressing the lactic acid formation with things like um, a dichloroacetate or metformin it's a kind of cheap cheap readily available drugs that if we use them in an intelligent way we can um, uh, massively weaken the cancer allowing your immune system to deal with it um, use other drugs to boost the immune system may, maybe use some uh, gentle radiotherapy to kill some of the uh, cancer cells which then the immune system can see that happening um, so there are kind of these ways using combinations of treatments um, if the treatments are cheap enough then we can be using you know instead of kind of um, one or two brutal treatments that absolutely trash your immune system that causal of collateral damage we can use a combination of four five or six mild treatments which is essentially what i've done um now those treatments i've had some of them have been really quite expensive like proton beam therapy um but we can get the costs down by refactoring so refactoring is where you don't try to um improve the technology in terms of outcomes but you create something that gives the same result but at a in this case at a fraction of the cost um, I've um, maybe mentioned a long time ago in a video about for example with radiotherapy instead of having these um, huge accelerators with uh, massive magnets huge power consumption um, huge vacuum pumps and this kind of thing we can do laser accelerated particle therapy and make a proton beam therapy system that is a tenth of the current size tenth of the weight maybe a tenth or even less of the power consumption and would be a realistic bit of equipment that every hospital could have <laughs> instead of it being like a special rare thing that costs a huge amount and um, yeah, so there are there are ways that we can bring treatment cost right down and using a combination of treatments that have um, very um, little negative impact on the patient. That's really the way to cure cancer because with a combination of treatments, it becomes too difficult for the cancer to evolve right so you it becomes too difficult for the cancer to become resistant we know that if you just treat with them with chemotherapy or even just with most types of immunotherapy um, you're going to get resistance if you treat with surgery it's very very difficult to get hidden cancer um, 
but with a combination of treatments, then we give the patient the best possible chance of getting rid of the cancer. But those treatments have to be gentle. By gentle, I don't just mean gentle in terms of like the patient not having terrible side effects, but also, and more importantly, um, we need treatments that don't have a massive negative impact on the immune system. Because when we're talking about curing cancer, it's the patient's immune system that's really key. Um, so if you're in a position to make a donation, um, that's what the money's going for. Um, you know, if, if, if you're able to donate, then um, it helps me put the team together. 2022, I'm going to be opening a research lab, multidisciplinary research lab. Um, yeah kind of uh, amazing stuff and um, Japan is really the place to be doing it because there are so many skilled engineers here um, there's a really fantastic medical system but we need um, a catalyst we need people to be talking to each other different researchers to talk to each other we need Japanese researchers to publish their work outside of Japan. Um, Japanese medical researchers and doctors often attend conferences all over the world, typically don't um, give presentations. So they listen and learn, but they need to be sharing their research. And yeah, I'm well placed to do that because um, I've been treated at many different hospitals and have many... Um, many many contacts in my network um my oncologist is a world leading um scientist as well as a doctor i mean he's considered the father of immunotherapy in japan uh he runs two research institutes as well as uh cl doing clinical practice and treating patients like me so um yeah i know um people at uh, high levels in the Japanese um, um, kind of in the health system in terms of clinical practice. I don't know many people at like management level, but uh, I'm going to work on that over the next year. So with your help, um, I think I can really make a difference. And I think a reasonable, you know, a cost effective cure for cancer is... Um, within our grasp, but it's not going to happen with the way the medical systems of the world are now. There's just no, there's just no way um, because of the culture of it, because of the economics of it. But uh, I, th I can change that actually. I'm not going to say I think I can change that. Um, I can change that um, particularly with your help. So please donate if you are able to. Thanks always for your interest. Thanks always for your support. Thanks for watching my videos. Um, I deeply appreciate um, everything that you've done in terms of sharing videos, commenting, donating. Um, I'm alive because of my doctors and nurses, but my doctors and nurses are able to treat me because of your donations. So thank you for um, saving my life above everything else and i uh, hope you are having a fantastic christmas wherever you are and i shall speak to you in a couple of weeks so until then take care stay healthy and um learn lots because yeah we need to learn more and uh, do more to make the world a better place thanks for listening